Greetings and welcome to Harmony United Methodist Church for our virtual online worship. This weekend, the weekend of June the 7th, we are celebrating the, the Trinity Sunday in our larger ecumenical tradition. This day we also celebrate in the United Methodist tradition, Peace with Justice Sunday. So I thank you for joining us at this time for worship. I am Jeffrey Zalatoris, pastor at Harmony. And with me this morning or this afternoon with worship are Elaine Stuckey, Kristen Shriver, and David Elliott. We're glad you can join with us and can share in this time together. To let you know, we are continuing to offer worship through virtual online services available on Facebook and our YouTube placement. We'll continue to offer these as we slowly return to worship in the sanctuary which we will begin doing this week and hopefully over the course of the coming weeks we'll be able to offer more and more of our in-person worship. But if you're unable to make it to the sanctuary or if your health conditions should keep you at home, know that we will continue to offer our virtual online worship for the time. And so if you have any prayer joys or concerns this day you would like to share, feel free then to type those into the Facebook messages as you are watching on the premiere on Sunday morning. Friends, this is our Trinity Sunday, our time to celebrate the triune God. It is the call of our discipleship. So let us hear these opening words from the opening of the Bible from Genesis about God our Creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day.
are sovereign. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, Lord our, our Sovereign, sovereign how majestic is your name in all, all the earth. earth. Amen. Amen. Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through 23. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God, God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kind words, own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which their in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with the swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day.
Continuing in Genesis chapter 1, verse 24 through chapter 2, verse 4a. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make a human in our image, after our likeness, to have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created the human in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them, and God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with its seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Thanks be to God. from our gospel reading today taken from Matthew's gospel the Great Commission 
Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thanks be to God. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Those words today we heard from those early verses of the book Genesis. We heard those words affirming God's Holy Spirit that breathed life into creation. For us still today, God's very Holy Spirit breathes life into us and breathes life throughout all creation. For this we say thanks be to God, and let us pray. Holy God, in these uncertain and trying and very confusing times, you have much work to do in your creation. How can we help you today? Friends, what strange times and days we live in at this, this season. These days and these weeks and these months that have preceded us have been times of great discomfort, to say the very least. A virus that has run rampant through our communities and closing everything that we thought would be open for the past three months. To the times of, of violence in the streets, protests, words of Black Lives Matter, and folks suffering to overcome oppression in their communities. These are uncomfortable times, to say the least. So I was thankful when I opened up the, the guide for lectionary readings this past week and finding these familiar words from Genesis. I found these words to be a comfort this week, comforting words of a God who cares for us, a God who cares about the living. I hope you found life a plenty and life renewing as you participated in reading and sharing those words from Genesis this morning. Because this week I've been reflecting a lot on human life and human dignity. It seemed appropriate to read the story of creation as a story that would inform our prayers and our thoughts this coming week. This story of creation. The first story in Genesis is the ultimate epic poem of creation. It is this poem that reveals God's very nature as God relates to us. God's nature is that of creation and for life. And reflecting on human life and human dignity this week struck a chord with our United Methodist Church's annual weekend recognizing peace with justice that we are in. And so on this weekend, we recognize the value of peace with justice. We look at this occasion through the lens of the story of creation. And we see the very vision of God's proper creation is the creation of peace and justice, a creation where there is no killing, no violence, no abuse. That the proper creation is creation of peace and justice. This Genesis story teaches us so thoroughly and consistently that killing and violence are not part of God's creation, that even the act of killing animals for food is not condoned in this first story of Genesis. We see a consistent message God is for creation, God is for life and the living. On Peace with Justice Sunday, then, this creation story speaks also to us 
of our participation in God's creation. That God creates and preserves life, therefore, as inheritors in the image and likeness of God, we are called to participate with God in that creation. We are called to preserve life and not to destroy life. And that peace with justice means we work to end abuses against one another. Peace with justice means we work to end the destruction and the pollution and the abuse of ecosystems and animals and plants, and certainly people. With the creation story as our very backdrop, our role as people imbued with the image and likeness of God is to fulfill peace and justice in our walks of life and the places we travel. But our celebration today is not only the peace and justice, it is the celebration of the Trinity. That unique participation of God and three persons gathered together in perfect harmony and perfect relationship. Here too, the creation story helps us understand God is the triune God of creation. First and foremost, our understanding of God is that God is for the living. This is the most basic, most fundamental teaching we have about God. God breathes life through the Holy Spirit, that God breathes over the chaos of the void and that the Holy Spirit sets the very stage of life. The Holy Spirit breath brought forth life, brings forth life. God creates, God makes life. God is the God of the living. So it goes today, recognizing this particular understanding of God. That in the Genesis story, we heard how God as the creator and architect of the universe established the very parameters of matter and living, and that God as Holy Spirit blew right through the breath so that matter would gather and life would be formed. For we read those words today, but we're also reminded of those words from the very first chapter of John's Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. When we remember John's Gospel and this early story of Genesis, we understand how the Word was present with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. At that time of creation, that word we would come to know as Messiah, as Christ, as Jesus. Our Trinity complete. Just like that first chapter of Genesis, John's very gospel teaches that what had come into being through him was life. And that life was the light for all the peoples. The very life that the Holy Spirit brought forth was also carried forward through the very being of Jesus the Christ. Our understanding of Trinity follows the creation story and we understand then that God is the God of the living God of life throughout our readings in the Bible. Genesis though leads us to understand God and God's breath that creates and also brings into humankind a desire to love life and to create. Through God and through our hearts, we participate in preserving God's creation. And we know God through the love of life that pulses in our arteries and through our veins, that God established humankind as God's very stewards of creation and life. For when we know God, our lives follow where God leads us. We know God by caring for God's creation and for all who are in creation. But none of us alone can complete the task. God's creation is too vast for any one of us 
to do all of the work. We must share together in the work. We must share in the work with God present with us. We must share in the work with one another. But the work is there. And God invites us to look for those places and those spaces where there is great need for life and there is great need for the breath of creation. And so God invites us into places that are uncomfortable for us. Places where life is harmed, where creation is not being fulfilled. God invites us, the Christian, into the places of discomfort. Because that is the leading edge of healing. That is the leading edge of creating. It is the very leading edge where life is renewed. None of us can do this work alone. But through Jesus, as we have read, through Jesus we can go into those places and know that Jesus accompanies us, strengthens us on that journey, helps guide us into that place, and we know we can call upon Jesus as we are doing the work God has entrusted us to do. And so we are called, invited by God, to look into places with compassion, places with great need, places with harm and wounds that need to be healed, we are called to enter those places. And the Christian is invited by God to work together with God and to work together with one another to fix the brokenness of creation and to participate in liberating people who are oppressed, oppressed by systems and governments and corporations and by other people. And so God breathes into our hearts, a love for God, a love for our neighbor, a love for the fullness of creation and life. Friends, inhale deeply, for the Holy Spirit is breathing into you. And then ask yourself, how can I help today? And ask God, God, you have so much to do on this day in your creation. How can I help you today? For God's creation is all about life. God intends us to live in harmony with the image and the likeness of God. And so we live for life. We live for the living. God did not create so that people would become killers or destroyers. Not so that people would become poachers or racists. Not that people become polluters or arsonists. God created us that we would participate as partners with God in God's very creation. The life-giving, life-renewing, life-sustaining work that God places before us. That is what is meant by stewardship or dominion in those words of Genesis. Having dominion over the fish of the seas does not mean wanton destruction of life. Having dominion over the birds of the heavens does not mean killing every last passenger pigeon for sport. Having dominion over all the earth does not mean to violently abuse peaceful protesters. Dominion means to live for creating the beloved community, to inbreak the very kingdom of God among us, and to uphold God's very fundamental role for life and creation. Yet we are also sus subject to the discomforts that can send us away. Because oftentimes we want to feel comfortable in life. We dislike feeling uncomfortable. There are times when we do need to feel comfort. Times when the world around does press against us too much. There are times we need to be renewed and rejuvenated in our faith too. But those should be moments for us to prepare ourselves to return into the mission field where we can serve as God has called us to serve, and those are places of discomfort. God invites us to move outside of our comfort zone when the world is debased and when people are abused. We are called into action to heal the world as life-giving and life-renewing ministers. That is the message of being made in the image and likeness of God. So we as Christians have a calling 
to sustain and defend those people who don't have power, to give voice to those who are silenced. We are invited to live into that image and likeness of God, and that is about sustaining and preserving conditions for life and living. And as we read from the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus was departing from the disciples, he reminded them once more of his relationship to them and the value of that relationship to life. And he set his commission on to those disciples that they are to make relationships with the people they meet so that they would build relationships with God that is life-affirming work. And the disciples were instructed to leave no one out, to invite everyone in to make disciples of all the nations. And like those disciples, you and I today are invited by Jesus to go, to make disciples, to befriend and build life-affirming relationships in places that are not comfortable for us, but to build relationships to peoples of all backgrounds and of all nations. Jesus placed the disciples in very uncomfortable positions, yet they knew Jesus would accompany them and strengthen them on their journey. The disciples would go to people and places that were strange to them and uncomfortable to them. They would serve in ways they never thought they would serve, and they would take with them a message of God's very love, grace, and forgiveness to all the nations. They would baptize the peoples. They would make disciples to the nations where they traveled. That is the message of Christians through all the ages and eras. We are invited not to get too comfortable, but to allow ourselves to walk into places of discomfort knowing that God would journey with us and does journey with us. The words from Genesis, though, still give us that comfort. They also challenge us, and they challenge us to participate in the discomfort of finding and fixing and mending and healing life. Friends, as children of God, made in God's very image and likeness, we are invited to get a little uncomfortable and to minister through those places of discomfort. Because when we do, barriers will come down, creation will be affirmed, the oppressed will be liberated, God's love will be felt in new places and with new people, as though the very Holy Spirit were breathing over the face of the life-giving waters. Amen.
us pray. Holy God, you have given us grace by the confession of the faith of your holy church to acknowledge the mystery of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see in your eternal glory, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us share with each other prayers of intercession and if you are watching this during the premiere on Sunday morning, I invite you to type in any prayers of joys and concerns that you would like to share with one another. For you as the holy mystery, O God, whom we honor in our prayers and in our meditations on the Trinity that stretch human perception, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For peace and justice, not for some but for all, as the prophet Amos wrote, let justice roll down like the waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, we pray. Christ, have mercy. For all of us who have sinned and fallen short of your image and likeness, to confess our sins, to reject sin, and to live freely as servants, thankful of your forgiveness, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For an end to all forms of violence, and for your healing of all who have suffered the trauma of violence, we pray. Christ, have mercy. And for the joys uplifting our hearts, and for the concerns weighing on our souls, we bring all before you and ask your blessing on each according to your goodness, we pray. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Friends, we will continue to share with one another signs of peace um, through the Facebook messaging or here present in the sanctuary. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us continue our time in prayer and our time of sharing, knowing that we are a thankful people, a people who have recognized God's goodness in our time and in our journey. So this day and through this week, as you feel led, we invite you to make contributions to the ministries of this church and the ways that we're able to help feed the hungry, to minister to those in the neighborhood, to offer these worship services. Let us then pray our prayer of thanksgiving and the offertory prayer this day. Gracious God, from your abundance of living bread and living water, you have blessed us. We give you thanks that you choose to lead us and provide for us. As a sign of our thanks, we offer you the first fruits of our labors. May our offering be pleasing to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. We enjoy you to Speak along with us as we offer these words, the prayer that Jesus taught us, a prayer that we proclaim with the confidence as the followers of Jesus. Let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Beloved, as we depart this time, go with this blessing that you are children called to serve in places that are uncomfortable, but knowing that those are the places where God's love is needed the most and the ministry of God's servants are needed the greatest. So go then this week, witness the presence of God in those places, witness God's signs, share that message to those you see. And may the triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go with you, guide you, and give you peace. Amen.